Well, I have a question for you, Commissioner, about Ms. Annette Versharian, who was the, the Liberal appointed Chair of Sustainable Development Technologies Canada. That's the billion dollar green slush fund. Why was she subject to the Conflict of Interest Act? Well, she was a, the chairman of the, of the uh, STDC and as such appointed by Governor and Council, and so she was subject to the, the Conflict of Interest Act. She declared her con conflict and she did for when, went through the rules of when she was appointed, le letting us know her interests, what they are. We, we appointed a councillor, as we call them, to her to make sure that her, her affairs would all be in such a way that there wouldn't be a conflict of interest. Who was the head of uh, um, government at the time that she was appointed? Do you know, Michael? Appointed in 2019, so uh, it would be the current government. So the head of government was Justin Trudeau. Yes. What sections of the Conflict of Interest Act did Ms. Versharian violate while chair of the board at the Prime Minister's slush fund, having been appointed by his government? Well, you read my report. So I made, <coughs> made an extensive investigation into her activities, and I found out, first of all, that uh, she's not only head of the uh, STDC, she was also head of two non not for profit organizations, one called Verschuren Center and one Ma uh, Mars. And as uh, such, which are basically incubator of, uh, organizations. Right. And uh, <clears throat> certain companies came forward which were sponsored to, or by these incubators. She declared her conflict of in in interest. But then there was an actual vote, uh, so what they called, uh, <coughs> what is I'm, called. I'm, I apologize for the interruption, sir. I'm quite tight for time. Um, I was looking for the, the number at which sections that she violated. Um, I, I, are you able to, to reference those offhand well, well, or just to enumerate the number of sections that she was found to have violated? Yes. Michael, give, give him the details, please. So uh, she, uh, there were. Uh, two provisions, it was subsection uh, 6.1 of the Act and section 21. Um, sir, are you able to tell us how many hundreds of thousands of dollars um, she was deemed to have uh, been the beneficiary of as a result of, uh, of the conflict? Uh, as part of the report, we didn't do the calculation based on the, uh, the votes uh, and the dollar amounts associated with those votes. So we have the Prime Minister's hand-picked chair of his billion-dollar green slush fund who's found guilty of breaking um, Canada's ethics laws. This is, of course, the latest in a long list of Liberals to have uh, been found to have contravened this act. In your investigation, did you find that former Liberal Innovation Minister Navdeep Baines was of aware of Ms. Versharen's conflict of interest with NR Store at the time that she was appointed? Just a quick yes or no, if you could. We did not look at, at her appointment. That's not our job. Our appointment, our job is to look at her, not the steps that take go to her appointment, but what once she is appointed, does she have a conflict and how can it be resolved? And by the way, what we did find, and let's make it quite clear, that she received incorrect legal advice, and that was the real problem. And this, her, her advice was because it was an emergency COVID conflict of interest issues do not apply. I was absolutely wrong. She followed that advice and voted on, uh, on, the, on the subsidies that were given to all companies to the injections in order to help them survive the COVID uh, crisis. And, 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 and what I found is, yeah, no, you shouldn't have done that. You should have recused yourself, you should have walked out of the room because the vote affected a company in which you have an interest. She didn't do that, but she did it. On the record clearly shows that she was told no conflict of interest is here. On, and I spoke to her counsel, I cross examined him and said, on what basis? And he said, on my knowledge of basic corporate law. There's no corporate law that I know of which says because there's an emergency, conflict of interest does not apply. So it was just incorrect advice that she followed.